What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be focusing on integrated writing, integrated essays. So please take out your notebooks, have your writing utensil in hand, and get ready to take notes. So please copy down the note taking diagram R colon one two three. Now next to R you're going to be writing down the reading's opinion. So this is going to be revealed to us probably most likely in the last sentence of the introduction paragraph. Now next to number one, you're gonna be paraphrasing, taking notes on the first body paragraph, number two, second body paragraph, and number three, third body paragraph. It's pretty simple. Once you're done taking notes the way I want you to take notes, you should have 50%, half of your integrated essay completely or almost completely organized. So when you're taking notes on the reading passage, Focus on changing the sentence structure of the reading passage, and then worry about the synonyms when you're actually typing your essay. So as I've said before, there are gonna be two stages in the paraphrasing process. The first stage is to mix up, combine, or split up the sentences in the reading passage, and the second stage is gonna to be to use synonyms while you're actually typing your essay. All right, so let's go to my laptop, look at the reading passage, and take notes together. All right, let's take a look at the reading passage. Now, we're always going to start reading from the bottom up in terms of the introduction paragraph because the last sentence of the reading passage's introduction almost always exposes the reading's opinion. However, the most likely explanation was that this was a large methane gas explosion. All right, so the reading's opinion is that one of the largest explosions in history, which took place in Tunguska, was a large methane gas explosion. All right, so the professor is gonna say that no, this was not a methane gas explosion. It was most likely caused by something else. So the topic of this debate is whether or not one of the most enormous or one of the largest explosions in history which took place in Tunguska was indeed a methane gas explosion. All right, so as soon as you know what the reading's opinion is, you should immediately know what the lecture what the lecturer's opinion and the topic both are. All right, let's move on to the first body. Despite the fact that the first examination of the site was only done in 1927, there have been many expeditions there since then. None of them have shown any evidence of an asteroid strike. No rocks or material from an asteroid have ever been recovered. Now, I hope that you guys noticed the absence of conjunctions in these sentences. So over here, I feel like there should be a however, and over here, I feel like there could have been a because instead of this period. So that's how I'm gonna organize and paraphrase the information that I just read. All right, so my notes would be, although numerous expeditions have been conducted in Tunguska, no rocks or material from an extraterrestrial object have ever been discovered or unearthed. That's all I'm gonna write. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna take notes on. All right, let's move on to the second body. Known asteroid sites on Earth have large impact craters, but Tunguska has none. Some people believe that a lake was the impact crater, yet researchers have, all right, that sounds very specific. It sounds almost like an example, so we're gonna stick to the first, uh, first sentence for now. Okay, so how I would have taken notes on this sentence is, um, the vast majority of asteroid sites have big impact craters, yet Tunguska does not. All right, and then let's read this. Um, trees were knocked down and stripped of their branches and bark. These effects are more consistent with the gas-like methane explosion. All right, so that sounds pretty relevant and important, so we're gonna add that. Okay, so the second follow-up sentence would be, moreover, many trees were knocked down and had their branches missing which were more consistent with a gas explosion. All right, so we're done with the second body. Now let's take a look at the last body paragraph. You guys took a peek at the independent writing topic. Take a look. All right, let's look at the last body. Tunguska has many rivers, lakes, swamps, and peat bogs, and it is known for having high levels of methane gas. Uh, one extremely believable theory suggests that a high concentration of methane gas built up underground. It was then released either by humans or naturally causing it to explode. All right. Okay, so the reading's third, third reason is that Tunguska 
is notorious or famous for having many rivers, lakes, swamps, and peat bogs that possess high levels of methane gas. Meaning that one likely theory is that the methane gas was released and exploded above ground. All right. Now that we're done with the reading passage, let's listen to the lecture. All right, I'm going to turn on the lecture pretty soon, but before I do so, please copy the note-taking diagram. It's going to be almost identical to the reading passage's note-taking diagram because the only difference is the letter up here, but do it anyways. Now, I want to remind you guys that for integrated writing lectures, you should actually be writing down almost every single thing that you hear. Now, that's because for integrated writing, you're given 20 minutes to type your essay, which means you have actually a lot of breathing room a lot of time to think and contemplate about what the professor said. Now that's only if your typing skill, typing speed and accuracy are both up to par or better than average. So please work on your typing skills if you feel like they're not average, below average. But anyways, yeah, write down as many words as you hear because the more, the more words you have written down, the more resources you'll have to rely on when and if you do have to make educated guesses. Also, don't forget about the importance of those educated guesses because they allow you to receive bonus points. Those educated guesses make you eligible to obtain bonus points, all right? Just like Michael Jordan said, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So take as many shots as possible, all right? But make them, try to make them reach the hoop at least. Just don't just lop, don't just throw up air balls. So make educated guesses. All right, let's listen to the lecture. B. Listen to a lecture on the topic you just read about and complete the note diagram. There was a great explosion in Siberia in eastern Russia in 1908. The explosion's cause is still debated to this day. Some people claim it was a nuclear device, the crash landing of a UFO, <laughs> or a gas explosion. I, however, am certain that the event was caused by an asteroid exploding above the Earth as it entered our atmosphere. Let me explain. Many eyewitnesses reported a streak of bright light in the sky close to Earth. One said it was, uh, as if the sky had split open. Soon afterwards, there was a massive explosion and a great wind which shattered windows and knocked people to the ground. The light in the sky suggests, uh, an asteroid entering the atmosphere. Since the asteroid exploded before it struck the ground, there was no impact crater to be found. No asteroid rock has been found as well because it either washed away before scientists could get there or it existed in such small quantities that it was essentially unrecognizable. Also, the explosion destroyed trees in a unique pattern for 50 kilometers all around. The trees directly below the explosion were still standing but had lost their branches and bark. Those further away were not flat. Laboratory tests simulating an asteroid explosion conducted by the Russians revealed identical patterns of destruction. There's also the implausibility of a methane gas explosion. The main reason is the sheer volume of gas required for an explosion of that size. The area simply doesn't and never did have enough methane gas to have created this kind of explosion. No way. Additionally, if there had been a gas explosion, there would have been fires nearby, but no eyewitnesses reported any fires burning in the forests. All right, now in this lecture, since the professor first started talking about the topic, so he um, quite obviously mentioned Tunguska, Siberia, 1908, in the beginning of the lecture. So that should have caught your attention. So that's the topic. Then he moved on to some, some possible explanations that other people came up with. Um, I think he laughed a lot after seeing a UFO explosion or something like that. And then he finally talked about the reading's opinion, okay? Methane gas. After talking about the reading's opinion, he finally said what he thinks. So for this lecture, all of you guys should have recognized when the professor finally said his opinion and started taking notes. So let's look from here. It's certain that this event was caused by an asteroid that exploded above the Earth's atmosphere. That's the lecturer's opinion. That's the professor's opinion. 
This is obviously something that you would not have been able to write if you did not listen to what the professor said in the beginning part of the lecture. So please, if you missed it this time, start paying attention to it a little bit more carefully next time. All right, the first argument, bright light in the sky as if the sky split open, suggests that an asteroid entered the Earth's atmosphere and exploded before it struck the ground. So no rocks found because washed away or unrecognizable. Okay, so the first argument, the professor basically said that there was a bright light in the sky in 1908 when, or right before this explosion transpired. And many people said that it was as if the sky split open. Now this, all of these phenomena uh, point or suggest to the fact that an asteroid most likely entered the Earth's atmosphere and exploded before striking the ground which is exactly why no rocks were found due to the fact that they probably washed away before scientists got to the scene or existed in such small quantities that they were just unrecognizable. All right, that's everything that I remember from the lecture. So although my notes look very simple, I'm gonna be adding a lot of spice. I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be adding a lot of pizzazz to try to get as many bonus points as possible. Please don't forget about doing that. All right, the second argument, Destroyed trees in a unique pattern. Lab tests simulated um, asteroid impact revealed identical patterns. So the second argument was pretty short. All right, so what the professor said was, um, the asteroid destroyed trees in a very unique pattern. Interestingly enough, um, laboratory tests were simulated by the Russians, and all of these tests um, revealed that the patterns in Tunguska, the uh, tree patterns in Tunguska were identical to those simulated by the lab, all right? So it's pretty conclusive that an asteroid impact made the trees in the 50 kilometer area uh, become devastated in such a unique way. All right, third argument, sheer volume of gasoline necessary not in, what do you think, Tunguska? Didn't cause kind of explosion and not witnesses or no witnesses claim to see fire. All right, so the uh, lecturer's last argument is that the sheer volume of gas necessary to cause such an explosion was never in Siberia, uh, Russia, in Tunguska, Siberia, Russia. Um, as a result, uh, the lakes, peat, bogs, swamps there could not have caused this kind of an explosion. In addition to this, if there were a methane gas explosion, there would have been an enormous fire in the forest, right? But no witnesses claimed to have seen any kind of fire in the area at that time. So it's very suspicious, all right? Now, since we're done with the lecture's information, let's go over to my computer and look at the final project. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna start reading my sample essay, so please follow along and pay close attention. There are gonna be some discrepancies between my notes on the board and the sentences in my sample essay because I'm always gonna be using my writing capabilities to its, to its maximum potential so that I can obtain as many bonus points as possible. The reading passage and lecture have conflicting opinions about whether or not the great explosion that occurred in Tunguska, a region in Siberia, Russia, was caused by an asteroid. The article strongly postulates that this incident was caused by an enormous methane gas explosion. On the other hand, the lecture adamantly delineates that this event was certainly caused by an asteroid that exploded above the Earth as it entered the Earth's atmosphere for several compelling reasons. All right, let's move on to the first body. First and foremost, according to the author of the excerpt, although there have been numerous expeditions in Tunguska, scientists were not able to unearth any signs of an extraterrestrial object as no asteroid rocks were discovered. All right, so this is all of the reading's first reason and major detail. So everything else is the lecturer's first argument. Nonetheless, the lecturer offsets these points by declaring that many witnesses have actually stepped up and said that they saw a bright light in the sky and even stated it was as if the sky had split open. After this occurrence, there was a great explosion that shattered windows and knocked people down, which all suggest an asteroid impact. Now the sentence that I just read, after this occurrence, blah, 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 this was information that I heard and remembered, but did not have a chance to write down on the whiteboard. But since I was still able to 
hold on to this short-term memory, I was able to include it in the first argument. Please make sure that you tr at least try to do something like this at the real test. Plus, the remnants of the asteroid were quickly washed away by the rain and were so small that they were hardly recognizable. Okay, so another piece of information that I remember hearing was the rain. So I decided to add it in there. All right, the second body paragraph. On top of this, the professor in the listening. So this is all indicating to uh, the lecture's second argument, right? Don't make a mistake by typing the reading second reason here, please. The professor in the listening further points out that due to the fact that the asteroid exploded above Earth, there was no impact crater to be seen in Tunguska. Now, this is obviously information that the professor did not say, but I felt the need to include it in the first part of the lecture's um, second argument because this explains why there was no impact crater. I don't know why the professor didn't say it, but I felt the need to do so, so I decided to incorporate it into the second body. The asteroid impact destroyed trees in a 50-kilometer radius. Lab tests conducted in Russia ran many simulations of an asteroid impact and showed identical patterns, proving that the devastation of the trees in the area resembles the aftermath of an asteroid impact. Okay, so this was all of the lecture's second argument. These claims refute the writer's implications of how an asteroid could not have caused the explosion owing to the fact that there are no impact craters in Tunguska, and the destruction of trees in the area is more consistent with the gas explosion. All right, let's move on to the last body paragraph. The text lastly insists that Tunguska had a large number of rivers, lakes, swamps, and peat bogs that contain high levels of methane gas. Hence, methane gas probably seeped through the ground. So seeped through the ground means uh, leaked through the ground and exploded above the forest, destroying many trees. Okay, so this is where the lecture's third argument begins and ends. The, lecture in the, the speaker in the lecture counters these indications by asserting that a methane gas explosion is improbable, unlikely, impossible, due to the sheer volume of gas required for such a large explosion. Tunguska never had the amount of gas to create that kind of an explosion. Additionally, if the event were really caused by a gas explosion, there would have been fires, but no witnesses have mentioned seeing any fires burning in the forest. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was my sample essay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The next video is going to be covering independent writing, so please stay tuned and uh, be sure to catch the next video if independent writing is a huge struggle for you. Peace out.